Okay, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to prove to you the concept of shoot the monkey, uh, just to show you that no matter what happens with the velocity of this arrow, if the arrow is released at the instant that the monkey falls, it will always hit the monkey. And if the arrow is released faster, it'll hit the monkey higher. If the arrow is released slower, the monkey will simply fall more, and the arrow will kind of fall across like this and hit it a little bit lower. But no matter what, if the monkey lets go and the arrow is released at that instant and the line of sight is lined up with the monkey, they will always hit. They will always have an intercept. Okay, so what does that mean to have a final intercept? Well, basically what that means is that the final x component, okay, the final x component and the final y component was, must both match. Okay, so it must match. It's a lot easier when we're dealing with one-dimensional intercepts, like if a car and another car, when do they, one car overtake the other, or, or two people running towards each other, where do they meet on the field? But when we're dealing with two dimensions, it's a little more complicated. And so this is a really good proof to prove the fact that the arrow will always hit the monkey. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we have to define some geometry here on this uh, triangle here. So I'm going to define my angle theta here. Okay? And I'm going to define my hypotenuse as L, okay? And this X component here, or this X position all the way out here, is going to be L cosine theta. And this final Y position here is going to be Y equals L sine theta. Hopefully you can read that. I know it's a little hard to read, but that's L sine theta. That distance there and that position there is going to be L sine theta because I'm about to define my coordinate system right here. There's my x, there's my y, that's my coordinate system right there. So what happens here? Well, we need to define the uh, position functions of the monkey and the hunter separately. And I'm going to put the pieces back together in, in a minute. Uh, but we have to prove that the final x position and the final y position match. And if we can prove that at all periods of time, okay, um, when, when the arrow finally reaches this X position here, then we've proven that point. That no matter what happens, when that arrow reaches that X position right there, it's going to hit the monkey. It may hit it up here, it may hit it down here, or it may hit it right here, but it's always going to hit the monkey. But let's, let's prove it. I mean, what, what do we, you know, all this theory is great, but, you know, until we can prove something, we're not really doing much. So I'm going to start right here with the monkey. Okay, and we're going to talk about the hunter over here. And really what we're talking about with the hunter is we're talking about the arrow. Okay. So, what is the position function of the monkey, the x position function of the monkey? Well, does the monkey ever move sideways along the x position? No. Does it, does it, does it veer off to the right or veer off to the left? No, it's just falling all the time in this X position. It's falling vertically, right? So that's actually a very nice advantage that that gives us. Because we know that at all periods of time, the X position of the monkey at all periods of time is L cosine theta. So that's really nice because I know now that all I have to prove is that when this arrow reaches that X uh, coordinate that the y coordinates also match up between these two. That's the whole point, okay? That's the whole point. So I want to start here by defining my y position next. So here's my final y position. It's going to equal my initial y position plus v0t plus one half at squared. Okay, so let's analyze this for a second. Let's look up at our first component here. Y initial. Where's my initial position? Monkey's up here at L sine theta, correct? Okay. So Y equals L sine theta, okay, plus what? Well, my initial velocity of the monkey is zero because the monkey just lets go and starts falling. So the monkey's in free fall at that point. So that's just going to be, that whole term is just going to 
cross out the zero. The monkey is also falling to the earth, so it's going to be minus one half at squared. Okay, so now I actually have a governing equation for the position of the monkey. L sine theta minus one half at squared. So it's a position. It's a position function as a function of time. Okay for the position of the monkey. It's always going to be here on the x, but it's going to be here on the y, okay, at any period of time, okay. So, let's come over here now. Let's talk about our arrow. Our arrow is going to be in free fall, and we know that in the x direction, there's really only one governing equation. It's going to be delta x over delta t, because there's no acceleration along the x. I can rewrite this equation out to say delta x equals velocity x times time. And I know that delta x is the same as saying x minus x initial equals vx times delta t. And so I can write my x position as x final equals x initial plus v uh, vx delta t okay now vx if we're talking about the component of the x here this this if I drew my my little components out here of this arrow I have my v initial x and I have my v initial y it's actually up here like this right okay and I know that my v initial x is simply going to be my vx it doesn't matter because it's just constant it's going to be the v initial times cosine of theta, and this is v initial right here. And then the y direction, my v initial y is going to be v initial sine theta. Okay? Just kind of defining those to put them out there. Because I want to get my x position here now. Leave it in black just to be consistent here. My final x position as a function of time is going to be uh, zero here because it's starting from starting from zero. And then it's just going to be v of x, which we just said was v initial cosine theta delta t. So my x position of the arrow at any given point in time is going to be uh, v initial cosine theta delta t. And again, v initial is just the launch velocity, okay? All right, so that's my x position. So we're kind of solving the mystery here one piece at a time. I have the x position at all periods of time for the monkey. I have the y position as a function of time for the monkey. Um, now I'm going to define the y position of the arrow for all periods of time. So bear with me. I know this is looking a little bit long, but it's going to come together rather quickly uh, when, we, when we prove this. Okay. So we're still on the hunter over here. Okay. So let's define the y position as a function of time. So y final equals y initial plus v zero t plus one half at squared. Okay, and let's look through this piece by piece once again. Okay, my y initial is zero. It's starting at zero here. Okay, so that's that's just zero, right? Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, well y final equals zero plus but now I know I have an initial y velocity, right? Because I just defined it up here, right? My initial y velocity is v initial sine theta. So I'm going to say v initial sine theta t. And once again, gravity is pulling against it, so we're going to say minus 1 half at squared, like this. So the final y position of the arrow at any period of time is v initial sine theta t minus one half a t squared. Okay, so that is my uh, my y position. This is my x position of of the arrow, and then going back again for the monkey. This is the x position of the monkey and the y position at any period of time. What am I trying to prove once again? I'm trying to prove that the final x position. Okay and the final y position are equal 
when that arrow makes it across this x distance. In other words, no matter when that arrow crosses that x, it's always going to hit the monkey. The y, the y coordinates are always going to match, right? So that's what we're trying to prove here. That's the burden right now that we're trying to prove. So next, what I want to prove on the side of the hunter, I know this is getting long here, but it's the only way to do it. On the side of the hunter here, I want to say, okay, um, when the arrow does reach that x position, of, of L cosine theta, what's the time? What's the time for that, okay? So, when the x position does equal L cosine theta, what's the time for that? Well, we also have the function here for the x position, so we can find out the time when it travels that specific x distance, okay? So check this out. L cosine theta is the actual position that it would have to be in the intercept and that's the function. So what happens here? Well we get a pretty nice cancellation of the cosines here. Okay? And now I can solve for time. I can solve for time, right? So now my time when the arrow crosses that specific x coordinate, the time when it crosses this x coordinate is simply going to be um, L over V initial. That's the time that's going to take to reach that point. So this is a critical part of our equation right now. That is the time, that is the parametric parameter that we are going to be looking for to start testing this now to see if the Y positions also match at that point. Because we know that the X positions have to match at that point, okay, for the intercept. But what about that Y? Well, let's prove it. All right, so I'm going to go back to my y parameter here, my y, my y equation here, okay, this one right here, and I'm going to plug this in for the time, okay? So y equals v initial, okay, sine theta, okay, and here's t, so I'm going to plug in L over vo right here for the time, Okay, I'm just plugging in the time here. That's the time that it's at that x position. I'm going to plug it in here too, minus one half a, and now my t is going to be L over VO squared. Okay, so what does that final position look like at that time as a function of these parameters here? Well, it's going to be um, V initial here. Okay, and that's going to, actually, that's going to cancel out right here, right? So we see this V initial, that cancels out right there, okay? So let me just erase that first, okay? So we're going to end up with the final Y position is going to equal L sine theta minus one-half acceleration L squared over V initial squared. Now, that's a big deal, okay? Why is that a big deal? Because now I actually have something that I can compare it to with the monkey. Is the monkey's Y position the same as this one at that period of time? Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's, let's go back here and let's move this down so you can kind of just, uh, we can compare them side by side. Let me clone that, clone. And I think you're going to see something interesting here. Okay, this was the monkey's y position in any period of time, okay? And I'm going to plug in that, that, that same time parameter here, okay? So this was the monkey's y position, this is the arrow's y position, and we're going to plug in that same time for that position down here, okay? So let me move this a little bit further so you can see it. Hopefully this is all coming together right now. Okay, so we're going to plug that in in a second, okay? So let's plug it in. At that period of time, okay, we have y equals L sine theta minus one half A L squared over V O squared. So look at that. They are exactly the same position. You see that? So what does that mean? 
That means that no matter what velocity you shoot that arrow from, that the final y positions are always going to be the same at that x position. Okay? So that means that no matter what velocity you shoot this arrow, that this guy here is always going to intercept that arrow at that specific y position. Okay? So when that arrow travels that x distance, the y positions are always going to be equal and they're going to intercept. So that is shoot the monkey proven to you that at that x position, the y final y positions are always the same. You see that? This is exactly the same equation. Just put the parenthesis here. Same exact thing. Okay? So that's the algebraic proof of it. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove it to you in the next video just with some numbers, and we're going to take a look at it just to prove it maybe with two or three different sets of, of data points. But no matter how you, how you do this, they always intercept. All right, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.